Oh my god, look who's here. Great bumpin' Beezus. Yes. With presents for you. Presents? What's this? Go, Joe. Oh, man. Extra. Oh, wow. Lots of it. For your extra greasy man. Yes. All right, well, let's let you in here. Yes. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yes. Yep. There it is. Those are all the shiny shit you picked out. <laughs> you know, make sure that you keep that nice and cleanly uh, waxed. Stops it from rusting. <laughs> That's what they're known for. They're notorious for rusting. But if you keep it freshly waxed and you keep the car in a garage, it'll be fine. But uh, there it is. Looks like ice. It does. Big chunk of ice. Is that Biddy? Yep. Yeah, Biddy's playing dirt I over there. A little... <laughs> Biddy was picking a fight with her brother earlier. Her brother Boomer or her brother Chicken? Her brother, brother Tezzy. They were fighting through the fence. I don't know how much damage they could do to each other, but they were biting and pulling through feathers through the fence. That, yeah. Stupid yeah. idiots. And Tezzy's getting big. Tezzy is a lot bigger than Biddy is. So, I don't know what's going on in their heads, but clearly they wanted to fight, so... The Biddy may turn out to be male. Biddy's starting to look. Biddy's still in between. Yeah, Biddy looks like a boy. <laughs> and Boomer runs away from Biddy. They don't get along too well. Boomer's just afraid because Biddy's always pecking him. You can come out from under there, Boomer. I see you. Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. And this is... The Duckman's Duck Man. No, that's over there. I'm David Queen. <laughs> Boomer decided to come hang out with us also. I don't know what the hell's problem is, but he's been biting your shoes today. He likes these shoelaces. I don't know why. And he's been extra jerky. Well, we're starting to work on B's Carmen Gear here. We've got some stuff to start up in the engine compartment that we're trying to straighten out first because guess why? We have an engine. We've got an engine. And you'll see that in this video coming up. Uh, we got a few other things that we're going to set up as far as transmission and clutch are concerned. We're trying to get the engine compartment prepared so that way we can push that engine in. And that's what we're going to get into today. We're also going to walk a little bit about the engine and we're going to talk about the engine and uh, what more is coming up on this thing. And one of the big questions I keep getting asked, B, and we're going to ask you this right here while we're standing up front. Okay. B, why the hell haven't you washed this car yet? Why is it sitting here all dirty? Because paint comes last. Yeah, the, the paint and trim comes last, okay. you guys. Does it really matter? Are we going to waste our time, you know, scrubbing away at this car? Or worse yet, scrubbing the paint off as we're demonstrating here. The paint is just coming off this car. And of course, the more of it that we remove, the more likely it is that it's going to start rusting. Hopefully this thing isn't going to be sitting here too much longer. Uh, I want this thing together in the next... Let's say, you know, why don't we just put a, a deadline on it? May 1st. We can try. Uh, that's very doable, I think. Because what we need to do is, like, just turn bolts. There's no more weird welding of things. There's no more unusual um, fabrication of stuff. <laughs> I say that now, but you after... Say we, that. Yeah. <laughs> but after... Uh, we, yeah. All these parts of these videos aren't always filmed in order, you guys. So, actually, some of the stuff that we're going to start talking about, we've already been through. <laughs> and Earl knows this best over there from Pets Car Creations, that when you buy stuff from the aftermarket, things don't always work as you expect. And, and things that you expect to fit, you know, factory new or factory fresh, don't. Especially when you get things from three different vendors at once and you expect all these little components to jive and they don't fit right. <sighs> Definitely not original Volkswagen parts and you can't get original new ones anymore. You just, you can't. Or you're going to spend an arm and a leg for them if you even find them. But let's go ahead and jump into this thing and we'll show a little bit what's going on today. Thanks everybody for watching. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bell. You get updates every time I up video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of our different social media links. And we'll be right back. Alright, so there's the Gia. It's the first time you're getting to see it on its wheels. Yeah. What do you think of that ride height? It's yeah? yeah? I like the way it turned out also. I'm able to turn the steering wheel in the front and still have enough clearance to stick my hand in there. Not just finger, but get my hand in there so it's not rubbing. A lot of people on the internet, of course, are experts. You know, they know more than I do, even though... <laughs> 
Historically, I've never failed on a whole lot of anything that I've built here. <laughs> but people are telling me it's not going to work, and it, it works just fine. I don't see anything wrong there. We put some uh, spring shocks on it just to stiffen up the front a little bit more, and that also caused the ride height to raise just a little bit. And I wouldn't change a thing from where it's at. I wouldn't. I mean, you can go a little lower, you can go a little higher. All the adjustments there, you can you can play with it if you needed to. It doesn't need to go any lower. Yeah, it doesn't need to go any higher either. I think it's perfect as is. I think you're absolutely right. It's tastefully lowered, and that means just enough. We probably have, oh, maybe only two inches on there, because it has two and a half inch drop spindles, and I think we came up a half an inch, so. I think they're, they're, yeah, I think it is perfect just the way it is. I really like the way she sits. Uh, yep, those need to go away. Those are a bit rusty. Oh, we need to get you some stainless ones if you plan on keeping them. I was hoping to keep them, yeah. Well, you're probably not going to keep those unless you re-chrome them or polish them, but they're just going to rust anyway. Yeah. No, no hope there. How hard would it be to get a hold of some stainless ones? No hard. They're not expensive either. Twelve bucks? Oh, Something like that. I mean, chances are they've probably gone up like everything else. Got to pay for the gas price to get it here. Yeah, you found stick all over everything. A huge stick came crashing down here in a windstorm that we had yesterday, and I was just leaving to get in Ruby to go for a ride to a local car show, and um, in between going outside, back inside again, I heard a loud crash. The stick was laying across the back of the gear, was on the top of the tent, was on the bus. It was across my, well, my plants. They were over here on this cart where the engine is, so this whole area was covered by one giant stick. <laughs> and it was kind of rotten. It was big around as my leg, but I was able to snap it because it was just so flaky and kind of falling apart. Still, it's not something I wanted to get hit by. If it fell out of the sky, I'm sure it would have hurt me. But nonetheless, it didn't leave a dent in the car. Uh, I don't think it dented the bus. I haven't pulled the cover off to look, but it didn't even punch a hole in the cover of the tent. No damage, so I can't complain. Those mirrors, I found them in my stuff, something I bought back when I was a teenager. I don't know if you want to use them or not. I'm going to have to do a little... Yeah, it needs a little hole drilling or something. Cut, yeah. What is that? Uh, where'd this come from? Oh, that came off of the ground. <laughs> it right. was in the dirt somewhere over I here. I saw on the gear and I was like, oh god, are we missing pieces? No, that, that came off of something else. In fact, it yeah. looks like something that might have been in a ruby at some point. I remember the gray spark plug wire, that's probably what it was. Possibly. Just got trampled in the dirt and disappeared. Well, anyway. It warmed up enough I can run my sleeves up. Yeah, that's why I dropped my sweater. Well, all right. Here's the stuff that we're going to be working on today. This is your clutch throwout stuff. This is not related. Uh, unrelated parts. This is the throwout arm. Okay. Right? This is your throwout bearing that goes in the arm like that. Oops. This little bushing that's here okay. will go on here. There's also a little clip in there. The clip goes on first. And then we slot it into the transmission and pull it back. Okay. And then the other bushing will go in from the other side. And I think it's the big one first and the small one last. I think that's right. Then the spring goes on, okay. then the arm, and then the last circ clip that's in there. Okay. And I stopped at the store and I grabbed a new circ clip tool, so that way it should be an easy transition. <laughs> there's also a bolt in there, which I'm kind of surprised. I didn't expect to see that. But there's a little 10 millimeter bolt in there, which is what locks the whole thing together. So we got that taken care of also. There's the new arm, because we were missing one, so we got you a new one. And then here's the clips to hold in the throwout bearing. So this is just about everything you need. I don't think there's anything else here. Once we've established that, then while we're in the engine compartment, we can put in your engine seal. This is the rubber stuff that goes around inside of there. Get that tucked in. Shouldn't take too long. And then if you're done with that, then we can start thinking about assembling the engine. And seeing as how everything on the engine is clean, you may not even get your hands very dirty today. I brought, I brought plenty of go-do. Ah, I saw. Behind me here. <laughs> so that's what we got to assemble today. Think you can handle all that? I'm gonna try. I think we'll jack up the back of the gear so that way it'll be up in the air a little bit. It'll make it a little easier to work on for you. Oh, can I say that? Sure, go ahead. Okay. You just did. Yeah, okay. Sounds like a party to me. You know if you're gonna have to censor it or not. Yeah, if you're gonna be doing that, I might just stay a little while. Yeah. <laughs> all right, in the engine compartment here is some stuff that needs to come out. Because there was no engine, I wanted to weigh it down so that way you had a, you know, the look that there was an engine in there. Mm -hmm. So that way we can simulate what was, uh, what the car was going to appear. So yeah, I gotta pull those wheels out. They go in that wheel pile over there. Wheel pile? Yep. And then the weights, I'm gonna stick them back on the little trailer I have over there. I use them as ballast. Everybody needs a wheel pile. Yep. Everybody needs a wheel pile. 
So we'll get that all pulled apart and then we'll get this thing starting to work on. But uh, for those of you that are watching the Declan Springs on the Beetle about a week or two ago, these springs are very similar. I don't think they're quite the same because they actually did have a part number that was different, but kind of the same principle. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Many hours later. Guess what time it is, guys? <laughs> time. Mm-hmm. Mm. For you. Much needed too, especially after what we just endured. Why don't you tell your viewers what's in there? Because it smells amazing. Oh, whoop, whoop. Oops. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no, it's leaking. This is oh I'm sorry. It's okay. That's just water. Boomer bubble. What is in the glass is a little bit of mango brandy and some ginger ale. Really nothing too fancy, but hey, smells great. I mean, tastes great too, so. Mm -hmm. mm. <sighs> Try to put that down again without wrecking everything. <laughs> Go ahead and pop open that deck lid there. We're gonna talk about what was going on. <laughs> well, what we've been working on most of this afternoon is getting the clutch cross shaft put in there for the throw up bearing. This thing was an amazing fight. This car, for some reason, it was missing. And that's pretty much the way I got it, or at least that I remember getting it. I did put that transmission in there. Um, I don't know where it came from, but I did not pay attention to whether or not it was missing that part. I just stuffed it in there. Because the person that wanted to buy this from me, which goes back seven years ago, just wanted to make sure you had a transmission. So I just stuffed it in there real quickly to get it out, and that's where it sat. So anyway, that bar was missing, so we ordered some parts. Well, this is where things became a problem. The cross shaft didn't fit in the OEM bushing on the right hand side. We did get a new bushing that I could put into the transmission, but first I had to remove the old one, and it didn't want to come out. So instead we took another route and turned down the shaft in my lathe. Now the shaft fits on the right side just fine, but the new bushing on the right side didn't fit either. So once again, I took the shaft, put it back into the lathe, and turned it down a few thousandths more. But this end has splines in it, so I had to be extra careful not to mangle them. And once I was done cutting, I had to clean out all the burrs in the spline so that the throwout lever can attach to them here. The new bushing was now a good fit, so I went to install it all. This is a little tricky to get the hole in the bushing to line up with the bolt in the transmission, but with a little screwdriver or some other pointy object, you can easily feel for the hole and get it aligned. Then simply tighten up the bolt from the back side. Technically, I guess it's the front side, but yep, that's what it is. The throwout bearing is pretty easy to install, and I see a lot of people fight with these little spring clips trying to get these things on. And while it is possible to get these installed by spreading them open, the easiest way is just to install them with the spring end facing out and then turn them under and into position with a pair of 90 degree needle nose pliers. Well, that got the shaft in place and now it moves nice and freely. The lever, however, that we were going to put on the end is the wrong size. We either ordered the wrong one or the wrong one was shipped to us. We already have another one on the way and we'll be taking care of that in the next video. Waiting up here is the new spring for it, so we'll put that on as soon as we get that far. But anyway, effectively that's done. All it needs to go on is the arm and the spring last, drop the sore clip on the end, finish. Next step. We've got a whole bunch of rubbers. Don't you hate that we have to use rubbers? <laughs> stay protected. Yeah, you gotta stay protected. These are the rubbers that go around the engine compartment in here. Show us where they go. That's right. That one goes up in the front. And front is front, you guys, for those that are saying, no, that's the rear of the engine compartment. No, that's the front. This is the one that seals that one up. We got a nice German part for that. This is the empty part. And actually, when I touched the rubber and I, and I looked at this, it's nice and soft. It looks like it's really good, good quality rubber. I was a little bit amazed at what we got here. But being uh, it's going to help me with this one and get this thing spread and pull this old rubber out. This, uh, this didn't used to be this bad, but it dried up real quick. It used to be in actually pretty good shape when I got it. 
but yeah, it rotted and it went poof poof. So that's gonna get ripped out and thrown away. And then once we got the engine seal in there, what are we putting in next? <laughs> the engine. Oh, B, what have you got here? So shiny. Oh, but what is it? It's an engine. Yeah, but what is it? It's an engine from we, Kia. We get down there and look close to it. You get down there, there you go. Get down there with it. Yeah, but like, what kind of engine is it? Don't you don't know. No. You don't know anything about it? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you don't remember, okay. <laughs> it's a it is a, effectively, it's a stock 1600 engine. In other words, it's, it's what belongs in this car. Mm -hmm. It's a stock later model engine, 1600 dual port engine. Um, you probably noticed everything on this chrome because that's what B wanted. She wanted a whole bunch of nice shiny stuff. And I have versed her on this chrome will eventually go rusty, but if you keep the thing waxed and you keep it in a drier environment, this chrome will actually last you a very, very long time. But, um, otherwise, the only thing that's not stock in this engine is it does have a hot cam in it. I think it was a FK41 or something. I'm going to have to check with the previous owner on that because I just don't remember. But it does have an upgrade, so it is going to run a little bit lopy and it's going to have a little more power over stock. So it should be a little, little exciting to drive. So it should be fun. Um, otherwise, I gotta say, this thing is just beautiful. <laughs> and before anybody else in the comment section says it, you guys, if you're watching this video, check down in the comment section and look for the bozos. There's gonna be somebody that's gonna say, Chrome doesn't get you home. And no, it doesn't, but you know what? It sure is pretty. And when you put this beautiful engine into that dirty car <laughs> to get this thing rolling down the road, Man, this is gonna be it's gonna be pretty amazing actually. It's gonna be pretty amazing. So that is going in next. We're gonna do that in a, possibly our next video. We'll see. We gotta assemble it. We gotta put together the alternator and the carburetor and get everything bolted down. Nothing is bolted currently, it's just stacked together. And uh, well I mean that's what else is coming up. Do you have any any other input or any other questions you'd like to ask about what's going on here? I'm just happy to be here. You're happy to be here, we're happy to have you as always. <laughs> oh. oh no, my glasses. I almost got licked. <laughs> well, this thing is just, uh, that chrome is so bright. That is just amazing. Ding. I mean, it is just, wow. It's, it looks like just like a chunk of ice. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the camera's quite picking up quite the way it looks to me, but it's just amazing because you can see the reflection of all the components mm -hmm. in the chrome bits. So it looks like you have, you know, an extra intake manifold. When we put the distributor on there, uh, it looks like you have probably two distributors, <laughs> two carburetors. It's gonna, it's gonna give it a lot of depth that it wouldn't have had otherwise if we're just plain paint, plain painted. And for those of you that are saying the chrome shrouds are garbage, well, that actually is a quality one. It has the veins on the inside of it, and that's what a lot of them don't have. You end up with one that just it's it's completely hollow and the veins are what directs the air to where it's supposed to go. Without those, you get a, well, ineffective cooling. So this one should be good. We've got the rest of the components to assemble it. It's just a matter of doing it, but right now, guess what we're doing? Too much talking. Well, we're gonna wrap this video up today. Thanks everybody for watching. This engine's going in that Carmen Ghia very, very soon. Probably as soon as, um, maybe the next video for next Wednesday. What do you think? Maybe. You think that's doable? Yeah. As long Whatever as we... Permitting. Yeah, as long as we see you next weekend, I suppose. Well, I think next Sunday's gonna look good for you. Sunday? As we'll long get you as out here. Yeah, weather permitting. Weather permitting, yeah, of course, it's gonna be the big thing. And then we'll just have to, well, I guess we'll play it here from there. But uh, this looks great. I, I am probably almost as excited as you are. Because, I mean, this is two years in the making for you. For me, I think I've had the car almost 10. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's amazing how long things come around here stick. Oh, wow. I bought that while my ex was still around. She's been gone now about eight years, and she was around about, yeah, so nine years. I got about nine years on that car. So it'd be nice to see it go, but at the same time, it's gonna be a little bittersweet because it was a project I wanted to build. And I, you know what, I still did get to build it. You did. So I feel accomplished, even though it's not mine. Friendship, friendship oh, build. Friendship, friendship build, friendship build. Friendship build. Yay, superpowers. <laughs> so that's it for today. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck those dingle bellies to get updates every time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out DuckShit on it for all my different social media links. You can find B's stuff up there, you can find my stuff. B's got a tweeter, effectively. I've got two tweeters. You should get that checked. <laughs> Sometimes I get them checked with two hands. Oh, but, oh well, honey. Well, if you got two tweeters, you gotta double fist it.
Where the hell should we work it? There, it's going in the same hole. I, mean, I guess I could always just fork them out. <laughs> Maybe if they're side by side, though, then it'd be interesting. The dy dynamic of that would be... Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to lay sideways on a bed across you. Nope, I don't like that. Or something. <laughs> nope, I don't with, like with that. With my double tweeters. No. <laughs> and of course, we've both got YouTubes and a few other things, and you can't, can't find all of it unless you go to duckshit.net. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>